ready guys? Yep. Okay. We're located in Carrick Township, Bruce County. Just to the south of us is Malmey. Small little town, thousand people, rural Ontario. Okay. What a lot of people may not realize is Malmey is the strongest hard apple cider pocket in all of Ontario. Making hard apple cider was one of the easiest alcohols to make. So a lot of settlers, when they opened up this area about 1850, Bruce County was the last county to be opened up in this part of Ontario. It was originally called the Queen's Bush and it's still used. You still see that name a little bit used as the Queen's Bush of Ontario is this part. Anyways, well, as the settlers started coming and pouring into Ontario from Europe and elsewhere around the world, they started snatching up land and the deal was, okay guys, you come to Canada, you come to Ontario, but when you come here, the fighting stops. So you had to remember, we had Germans coming here, we had British, we had Irish, we had Scottish, we had uh, Dutch, we had all nationalities settling in Canada. And we started making hard apple cider. Well, hard apple cider was common throughout all of North America. It wasn't just here. It's hard apple cider is a very easy alcoholic beverage to make. You can make it in a trough, you can make it in a jug, you can make it in a, a vessel, almost anything you can make it in. But as time got on, the breweries got a foothold in Ontario and in Canada and hard apple cider went by the wayside. Beer took over, okay? Hard apple cider went by the wayside pretty much most places in Ontario except right around here. So right here in Malmé, and this what of Malmé, and I'd say maybe a 10 mile radius of Malmé, we retain that hard apple cider image for years and years and years. So when people come into the winery, I come into the basement, if I'm working that day, I instinctively ask everybody that comes here, if I don't know them, I instinctively ask, where are you from? And if they tell me that they're from Toronto or Cambridge or, or Barrie or something like that, I'll treat them totally differently than if they tell me they grew up around Malmé or within a 10 mile radius or 20 mile radius of here. So if they grew up within about a 10 mile radius of Malmé and are over the age of 45, 50, chances are they've got a memory and it may not be good of hard apple cider because the cider we made years ago was very harsh. So, and it's really interesting uh, when you get couples in your husbands and wives and if they're my age, say 55, 56 years old and they grew up around here and I'm in the tasting room and they're, and they're tasting different wines we make and, and this and that and they get to the ciders, quite often the lady will say, no Gary, it's okay. I don't, I'm not going to try the cider. And what she's really saying to you is she can remember something from 40 years ago and it wasn't good. Okay. Nowadays, to give you an idea, 40 years ago, no self-respecting lady would drink cider. Nowadays, 40 years later, 50 years later, females make up, I think it's around 56, 58% of cider consumption worldwide. When we make cider, we make cider almost identical to wine. You use controlled temperature, you use yeast strains, sanitation, bubblers, all the same technologies you do making wine right through. And the product is very, very refined, very, very crystal clear, very, very palatable from there. Okay. Now, but there still is some hard cider made. There's a large apple press to the south of us in Maumee, and that's where everybody gets their apples pressed in this area, and we get ours pressed there too. Now, this particular bottle, never mind the label on the here, this particular bottle was given to me by a, a fellow by the name of Pat Weber. Pat Weber just passed away just recently. Pat Weber is considered, or a lot of people consider Pat, he, he was a retired farm mechanic for many years and into his mid 70s and so, and uh, a lot of people consider Pat sort of like the uh, cider master of Malmé or the, the champion cider master. And he made a lot of different ciders and wines and, and very well respected. This is one of his last bottles of cider uh, that year, I should say. This is a cider he made from that year, but Pat, Pat had learned from some of our experiences. You see, when you make cider, one of the biggest things you want to do is once it's done fermenting is you want to bottle it off and seal it so it doesn't re-ferment. And Pat figured that out many years ago, but us 15 year olds, 40 years ago, never did. So this is what it looks like. I'm just sort of saving it. 